So today we're going to be replacing the screen on the LG E960 for the Google Nexus 4. Um, we'll be replacing the LCD and the digitizer. It's not very hard to do. I'll try to get the links below if you're looking for the parts. If you want to get good quality parts, I'll, I usually source them out and they're uh, very high quality. So just look at the links below. There'll be more information on the uh, parts or tools that I do use. Um, not very, not a very complicated process. You'll need a few tools, but uh, you do have to be very careful that you don't damage anything inside the phone. Um, there is a way to replace just the glass, but we're going to be replacing the entire screen because this one, um, the glass and LCD are broken. Just replacing just the glass is a much more difficult process and I wouldn't recommend it either way unless you're an expert technician. So let us begin. Okay, so this is the screen for the LG E960 or the Nexus 4. The two-way tape. We're also going to need a pair of scissors for cutting the tape later on. And of course a couple screwdrivers. We have a T5 hex screwdriver and a small Phillips. Uh, this is the razor we're going to use for cutting some tape. Also a metal opening tool and a plastic one. Recommend only using plastic but uh, I only have metal here at the moment. So we're going to begin with a T5. There's two screws at the bottom, so let's take them out. I'll fast forward all the unscrewing. Um, so, unscrew this one here. There we go. So now, we're going to remove the back from the phone. You insert the uh, opening tool in between the plastic back and the chrome bezel. Oh, first of all, yes, the SIM card slot has to come out first. Okay, then we begin with the bottom. That's where I usually start. So just work at the uh at the uh, side here don't uh, push too hard just take your time there's a few clips on every side I'm gonna fast forward this so just keep working it I go from the bottom to the top as you can see, it's starting to come out. Don't just pry it, keep unclipping the clips bit by bit. And the back comes right out. Okay, so we're gonna use the Phillips screwdriver. We're going to first of all unplug the battery, so there's two screws on the battery connector. Now this video is geared to replacing the screen, so there's some components we're not going to remove. The battery is one of them, we're just going to unplug it. Now there's uh, screws all along this back frame here. We're going to take them all out, they're also all Phillips uh, screws. Fast forward this a bit here. Unplug the battery before you proceed. Take an opening tool and lift up the plastic that covers the motherboard. There's uh, four or five clips along the sides that actually hold that in. Oh, I forgot one screw here, sorry about that. There we go, take that piece out. There's one more clip here at the end. And out she comes. Now we're gonna unplug all the connectors. 
So we have one here, the one up there, and then the LCD and digitizer, and uh, of course the battery one, which is already unplugged. The speaker assembly and the battery we're not going to remove. We don't need to in this case. So anyways, we'll take these out here. Okay, that's the LCD and the digitizer connector. Remove the antenna connector as well. And the bottom here is out already, so then uh, unhook, unhook the camera. The camera is going to come out with the motherboard. Okay, and then just uh, gently, and preferably not with an opening tool, uh, proceed to remove the motherboard from the frame. I, uh, I do use the opening tool here because I know what I'm doing. I know where to put it, but I would recommend e either using a plastic one or just your, your fingers. Okay, so lift it up with your hands and out it comes, that's the motherboard. This is the headphone jack if you needed to know. These are the buttons here, the power buttons here. They don't need to come out, none of that needs to come out. Right now we're going to go straight to heating up the screen and removing it. So apply a lot of heat. Uh, I start with the top where the speaker mesh is because it's easy to get an open tool in there. So just slide it in. If it's not uh, easy enough, heat it up a little more. In this case, because we're replacing the LCD and the glass, I'm not going to be very careful about breaking the LCD. But uh, if you are trying to do the procedure where you change just the digitizer, um, this is not the method to use. So slide it in. Feel free to use other tools to keep the glass up from coming back down and re-adhering to the frame. Slide the connector, uh, the opener tool alongside to break the uh, adhesive. All the uh, noise you hear, you might hear in the background is because I'm in the basement and uh, we're doing laundry. So I just thought I'd throw that out there, just so you know. But anyways, so the screen just starts to come out. Comes right out and then basically you just pull the connectors through the, uh, the groove on the top. Now the speaker mesh does not come with the new screen. So, I'll show you guys after what to do with that. But, con proceed here to remove every bit of leftover glue on the frame. You have to remove everything. You cannot put new two-way tape on top of old one. Okay, now we're going to proceed to glue down uh, some two-way tape. Um, I use the edge here for the sides of the frame. I'm going to fast forward this part too, but it's just to show you how it starts. Make sure you, you put two-way tape all along the edge. 
the 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 more complete you do this part, the better the screen is going to hold. There's no uh, there's no adhesive underneath the LCD, so the entire screen is being held on only by the two-way tape along the edge of the the frame. So I'm forwarding here, but uh, as you can see, I'm just going along the edge. Take your time on this part. No need to rush. The timer to the left. It's only because my camera only records seven minutes at a time, and I can't disable that. So since it's above my head, I have to keep looking at the timer. So, bust out the new screen here. Now the speaker mesh is the first thing we're going to worry about here. Just make sure that the uh, protector's off. So, I almost forgot about the speaker mesh. So here it is. Tape it onto the screen before putting the screen on the frame. And carefully slide the connectors through the slot at the top of the frame. Gently align the screen to the frame with the connectors going through and push down a little bit. Make sure the connector's in properly before you completely uh, push down all the way. Once it is, just push the screen along the sides. Not too hard. Okay, so now we're gonna put the motherboard back.
push down the connectors. The antenna connector, don't forget to plug in every connector. Once the connectors are in, there's a piece of uh, aluminum tape on top of the digitizer connector on the old screen. Doesn't come with the new screen necessarily, so peel it off and reuse it. As well as uh, prevent shorting out of any circuits that shouldn't be exposed. Okay, now at this point, now what I like to do is usually I like to test the screen before I go any further. I don't really need to test it, but just for the purpose of the video, I'll show you here. So it's working. I wait and test the digitizer as well, but I have already tested it. Never fully install or glue down the screen until you've tested it. When you order it from manufacturers, if you remove the stickers it came with or the packaging and you try to send it back if it's faulty, you will not get your money back because it's already been used and uh, in a lot of cases they're, they can't do anything about it. There's a lot of people out there that uh, are scammers and they will try to send the old screens back to the manufacturer and try to get their money back. But uh, so it affects everybody. So make sure you test first before you remove uh, any packaging. By packaging I mean the screen protector and uh, any screen protector it comes with. After the screws are all in the frame, make sure you put the backing in. Go along the edges and clip it all in. There's a about five or six clips and make sure they're all clipped in properly there's no gaps between the frame and the back okay now I'm removing the screen protector don't remove it before this step everything looks good power it on now I'm gonna put the sim card tray back in Put the two bottom screws in. And we're good to go. If this video was helpful, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.